Brian Powell of I Run Far with Tim Tollison for the 2017 UTMB. How are you, Tim? Take my gum out. Uh, <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> I don't waste a good piece of gum. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're feeling good before UTMB? I am. I'm feeling, feeling good, excited, happy to be here, healthy. Pretty much a perfect combination. Can't complain. Yeah. And so. so far, you've had a pretty good uh, combination at the races, the UTMB races. I, I guess I have yet to have a, a really bad race, and I'm hoping this year is no different. Yeah. But uh, you never know till till we get out there. Um, how, can you compare your experiences with CCC two years ago and UTMB last year? Because they were both good races. Yeah. You know, I think they they both ended up pretty good. I had low points in both of them. Mm -hmm. They also were both. CCC was my first 100K, and then UTMB was my first 100 miler. So they were uncharted territory in a sense for, for both those distances. And uh, to, to kind of do it here was, I, I kind of thought it was fun just in the, like being able to explore the Alps. Um, but uh, I think that will hopefully help me just with, you know, getting back out here for a third time. I, I know the course really well now. Um, and unlike maybe some other people during races that, you know, they report like they blacked out or they don't remember anything, yeah. like I, I consciously remember almost every step of that trail so like you know yeah i've gone back and replayed the both races in my head 100 times and uh, yeah i'm excited to kind of get out and work on some areas that i think i might be able to you know kind of notch down a bit and uh and i know areas that i need to be a little more careful on yeah. so i mean how does that work out in the actual race because you know there's the dynamic of actually racing other people whether you're you know strategizing or just like you're running with other people like yeah do you then push those places where you think you can make up time or do you just settle into your into the race as it develops as a whole i think a little bit of both yeah. like i something i've learned from i mean i'm still new at ultra running but something i've learned from marathoning and athletics is you really need to run your own race mm -hmm. and uh, especially with these longer races it's imperative to do that uh so i i try to implement that race strategy as best i can but knowing that especially on this year there's going to be such a depth at the front of the field you know maybe taking a few chances and you know putting myself in it you know and giving myself a chance is something that's going to be worthwhile as opposed to just sitting back for as long as i did last year yeah i mean like we were just talking about it in up until last year it basically was true if you're going to be on the podium at utmb you've got to be on the the top it, 10 at like cormier yeah, maybe pretty much except last year <laughs> two of the top three were not in the yeah, top 10 L ludo and i uh, kind of screwed that up <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, and I think, you know, last year kind of it, it worked out in our favor because we had someone like Zach pace setting. And and I talked to Laney ahead of time. We knew that if Zach employed that, that strategy, we were going to be able to just kind of gobble up quite a bit of carnage, the you know, from Champagne Lock to the – or, uh, yeah, Champagne Lock to the finish, and that kind of happened. Yeah. Um, but uh, there, this year, I think, as we, we mentioned, with the depth that we're seeing in the field – you know, we're going to throw 10 darts at the wall and at least three or four of those are going to stick. So it won't happen that someone off the pack mm -hmm. an hour like I was at Cormier, an hour behind the leaders, I don't think you're going to be able to come back and get on top three. I mean, because even if, let's just throw out two names, let's say Jim and Zach are take it out really hard. Yeah. You're still going to have behind them, <laughs> Killian, Xavier, yeah. Francois, like, yeah. Gediminas, yeah. you, David. Like You can't underestimate... Uh, that like th th those guys potential and you can't like predict that all of them are going to drop out yeah that's just not going to happen no <laughs> but with a couple guys who might go out hard there's an increased chance of one of them having the perfect day and there sticking is. it yeah like do you think about that at all in terms of i mean your own strategy or do you i yeah i mean i've, I've definitely visualized you know what it might be like to be in that lead pack you know the entire way but uh i think personally for myself it's going to be listening to internal cues on how my body's feeling early on mm -hmm. and if that means i do need to back off a little bit i will have the confidence to know that the training that i've done will allow a good second half of the race and just kind of you know sort of have that uh, a little bit of maturity to say hey like it'd be cool to be in the front but i don't need to be in the front mm -hmm. and i think that uh is something that has worked out for me in the past and you can look at a dozen of other examples men or women that have kind of taken that same approach and and i think that gives me the best chance of doing well yeah but at the same time i i do want to give myself a shot so i think being closer to the leaders through halfway is going to be important and and who knows maybe if the weather's bad it slows everyone down and then i'm comfortable in the front pack yeah so but uh it, it'll be interesting i i kind of feel like my strategy is to have multiple different game plans and then just being willing to pull whichever one is necessary on the day gotcha well it just started raining here um and uh 
it, there, there's a good chance of uh, a good bit of rain yeah. uh, Friday into Saturday. You train in the Sierra Nevada and yeah. not historically known for a lot of rain over the summer. No, we're <laughs> pretty dry. We've had a few thunderstorms, but I, I didn't actually run in them. So. Yeah. So how do you prepare for that possibility? Have you, I mean, it could be wet the entire time. It could dump on us. Yeah. You know, I, my approach would be to control the variables I can. Mm -hmm. If it's raining, everyone's dealing with it. I'll just make sure to try and stay dry, use my equipment properly, uh, still stay on top of my nutrition and not get freaked out about a variable I can't change. Yeah. You know, I think you can lose mental energy freaking out on something like that. Um, and I, I personally, in the past, I have not minded adverse conditions because I think it throws some people off their game. I don't think guys like Z Xavier, Francois, or Killing will be thrown off their game. I think, you know, maybe worse temperature or conditions are better for them, but some of the others in the field, it may really just throw a wrench in their, their approach. You know, they maybe aren't used to those types of conditions or, you know, it just kind of can make people freak out. And yeah. uh, I, although I don't deal with rain, I dealt with a horrific winter this last year, and uh, you dealt so with a little bit, <laughs> a little, bit, just just a little bit over 600 inches of snow. Yeah, and uh, so I I'm no stranger to running in just terrible conditions yeah. and like just gutting it out. Bring on just, a blizzard, and you're like, you're, I I wouldn't mind some snow on the passes. Other than like you mentioned, they may then cancel or reroute the race, yeah, which yeah. we do not want to see that happen this year. But no. uh, I mean, what does it feel like to be in what I mean? I think isn't hyperbole and that the best, you know, trail ultra field ever. I think it's pretty exciting. Um, yeah. I mean, that's part of, you know, the, the reason that I, I really wanted to come back here. Cause I, I knew regardless it was going to be competitive. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was going to be this competitive. I joke with Lindsay, my wife, that I always choose the wrong year to do races that like I sign up for a race and then all of a sudden it gets super deep and it's like, man, I thought that was going to be a relatively low key event. Mm -hmm. UTMB is never low key, but, uh, I, I, I am excited. It's kind of fun to be a part of it and all the, the excitement around it. And, uh, it to me feels more like, you know, marathoning like the Olympic trials or going to like a major city marathon, which that kind of stuff really kind of motivates me to, to compete. And, uh, yeah. How is, uh, how has your training been for this? I mean, you've had a good season so far, starting off in, I believe, Hong Kong and yeah. uh, winning ultra trail Australia. You ran speed goat, I think second, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Are you feeling strong? I, yeah, you know, the, the normal train's been going good, feel strong, ready to get out there. Now there've been a lot of guys who, if you're looking on Strava or their, whatever, their training logs yeah. are doing a ton. Yeah. Uh, what has your training been like? Is it uh, little, is it controlled or, I mean, do you have a, a real game plan for what you're doing out there? Yeah, I, I've kind of like, I keep going back to like, I think I'm so new to this sport. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm only in my third year. I don't have a lot of experience, but I have 15 years of competitive running experience and something I'm trying to employ in ultra running is that kind of methodical long-term slow build-up approach if it means that like my best races are still two or three years down the road I'm okay with that because mm -hmm. I want to be around two or three years down yeah. the road um, but so like last year coming into UTMB I I had done more climbing per week in the two-month build-up than I ever had mm -hmm. and this year I've increased that by about 30 or 40 percent per week and still feeling healthy and strong. So I've been able to handle more vert per week. I feel more prepared after learning stuff from last year. Um, and, you know, I've kind of, Mario, my coach and I, we, we talked about like, hey, just don't pay attention to other people. Like I actually unfollowed people on Strava because I didn't want to know what they were doing. Yeah. Because like, I feel like I'm already pushing my personal envelope enough that you see what other people are doing and you start thinking, oh, maybe I need to do more. And that's a dangerous game to get into. Like, and having Strava, which is cool, is also a double-edged sword. You can really put yourself in a well. And mm -hmm. I think that coming to this line, you know, if I'm 1%, if I'm like 10% under trained compared to others, that might be better than if one person's 1% over trained. Yep. I think that gives me a better opportunity for a successful day. So I, I'm excited. I think I've done enough to at least run the race I'm hoping for. And maybe at the end, you know, that's a 10th place finish. And I say, hey, maybe I improve on these things next year and I'll be back, but we'll see. What did your uh, taper look like? How, when did you start and how aggressive? Um, my, my last big long run was two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just, just a 35 miler with an ample amount of climbing. Four passes of Mammoth Mountain, my ski resort okay. that sits at 11,000 feet. And, uh, and I did that last year and it, it was one of those kind of confidence building workouts that you get through that, you know, four passes of an 11,000 foot peak. 
on some technical terrain and you kind of feel like, okay, I can handle what UTMB is going to throw at me. Um, and then I've just gradually dropped my mileage a bit, still with some vert, uh, but uh, legs are feeling pretty good. Nice. Well, yeah. best of luck out there, Tim. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks.